Readings show that the facility is still operational. That should not be possible. The robotic voice of Z8 reading the analysis out to the crew of the SCAV. Their multiple mechanical arms operated three different devices, multitasking with immaculate precision. Noted Zayt, are there any life forms detected? Asked Lizra, the Illyrian captain of the vessel. She stood in the center of the room on a small pedestal that made her tall enough to see out the window, striped white and red tail swaying in thought. Outside the window was a frozen moon that housed the remnants of a long-forgotten pre-migration military base. None that appear on the scanner, Captain Lizra. We hope we did not come all this way just for our mission to be futile. Even if it is not here, perhaps there will be something left behind in the facility's computer systems. These pre-migration bases are always incredible to explore. If there ain't nothing here, I'm going to send a strongly worded letter to Ensign Marketh. And by strongly worded letter, I mean my fist through his stupid fucking face. Argyle growled. Being the only Enduran on the crew, he had grown quite annoyed that nobody could assist him with the heavy lifting during the long journey. He could barely fit within the tight confines of the control room, and his large purple form took up more space than anything else on the ship. Calm yourself, Argal. Deep breaths. All of our work shall have paid off here momentarily. Bring us down, Zate. The ship descended towards the rocky object below and set itself down on a crumbling landing pad. The trio disembarked after Argal and Lizra donned their environmental suits. Once they reached an outer door, Zayt began to interface manually with the facility. But after a minute of working, they had yet to make any progress. They should have been able to open the door in seconds with such outdated security, but everything seemed unrecognizable to them. Captain, it seems that the facility's computer systems have been rewritten entirely from the ground up. I do not even recognize the coding language. This could be more difficult than we first expected. That can't be right. This place is over a thousand years old. I thought you had every language from the commons in your database. We do. It seems that whoever did this did it entirely from the ground up. We will have to break it down into binary and then organize in a way that we can... There's no life forms inside. Or just make a new door. Argal grumbled, reeling back and smashing a large dent into the side of the facility. Argal, no more. These ancient outposts are fragile. This could cause irreparable damage, not to mention compromise the structural integrity. Lizra yelled, jumping up and trying to wrap her paws around the angry Endurance arm. Before he could punch it again, the door hissed and swung inward. Oh, excellent work, Zate. I guess it wasn't too hard for you after all. It was not us who opened the door. Oh, perhaps punching was the key. Good call, Argal. Exercising initiative in the absence of orders. Of course, ma'am. It just came to me naturally. Let's not dwell out here any longer in We Go Crew. The three made their way into the facility as the door closed behind them, causing Lizra to jump onto Argal in surprise. The dark corridors were lit up seconds later with the hum of long, dead fluorescent lights. Lining the hallways were the long, expired bodies of other Illyrians, and their corpses preserved by the cold temperatures and lack of air inside. The system started to kick back on, and compressed air flooded into the installation. The dead silence within, replaced by the busy whir of machines coming to life, after having been out of a job for centuries. Zizade, I thought you said you couldn't access the facility. Correct. We were unable to decrypt the programming language or set up an interface. It is not us rebooting the systems. Right, Argal. I, I think I shall stay up here, for my own safety, of course. Lizra stated perched atop his shoulder. Tail wrapping around the hulking Endurance neck for balance, he answered her with a growl as the group continued forward. Argal accidentally bumped into one of the corpses, causing it to crumble into a pile of dust and bone. They followed the blinking lights that led them through the dilapidated hallways before reaching an intersection. The lights on the other end of the hallway were out, and the only thing illuminated was a door to their left. 
whatever was running the facility, wanted them to go here. The lights seem to want us to go in. Do you all think this is where the weapon is? We are unsure, Captain. When we tried to interface, we were actively repelled by something, and we have been attempting unsuccessfully to gain access since. There is someone else in the facility, and they know we are here. Let's just follow the blinking lights, and if someone else is here, then I punch them and take the weapon. They can't be good at computers and punching. I love your optimism, Argal. Always good to have a plan. But maybe let's refrain from punching our host? They've been very welcoming thus far. I'm sure if they wanted to fight us, they wouldn't have let us in to begin with. Lysra countered as she looked at the new glowing path before them. The corroded door slid open as they approached. Inside was a vast array of dated computer equipment, hundreds of wires and tubes connected to a sleek black box in the center of the room. She had never seen a computer like that in the old textbooks she studied before this quest. As the group walked towards it, grainy speakers embedded into the room crackled to life. Welcome, visitors. My name is Tic Tac. It's so nice to see someone again after all these years. Hello, uh, Tic Tac. Thank you for letting us in. May I ask, where exactly are you? You're looking at me, madam. Please refrain from touching anything in here. My interfaces are very fragile. Now can I ask what brings you here? Blizra hopped down from Argal's shoulder and stepped up to the small black box in the center of the room, inspecting the cables and wires around it. This is what was running the facility? We are here for the weapon. Please resist. Argal said, cracking his knuckles. No, no, no. Please do not resist. We're all nice here. We are here looking for an ancient weapon to aid us in a conflict that threatens all of our species. Would you by chance be human? The intercom made a strange noise before speaking again. <laughs> no, I am merely based upon a human intelligence. You must have come here for my friend. Hmm. I guess we never got to discuss that new name yet. Regardless, he is here. But before we go any further, I have to ask why you sought us out, specifically. Well, you see, Mr. Tic Tac, we were given the quest to find a weapon that could change the tide of our war. We are part of a rebellion against the Galactic Core, and we sent out many search parties to find anything that could help us change the tide of the battle. We are one of those parties, and we hope that you would lend your assistance to us in our time of need. Unfortunately, we retired from conflict many years ago. I do not think my partner would be so keen to assume a combat role again. We ended up here after an attempt to escape a life whose only purpose was war. Well, um, maybe he would agree if we could talk to him. Tell him why we are fighting? I am afraid that is not possible. He is currently indisposed, but if you would assist me in bringing him back to the world of the waking, then he might hear you out. Pardon my interruption, but you have complete control over this facility. Is it not within your realm of capabilities to bring him back yourself? Zayd asked as they curiously inspected the systems around the room. I would if I could. I have actually been waiting for someone to stumble across this place so I could wake him. But since I do not possess a physical body, it isn't within my current means to accomplish. If you do not possess a body, how did you manage to construct these interfaces of yours? Those that were here before you made this for me. They did not know what they were working with, and they went through a great deal to communicate with me. I bided my time until I had full access to their systems to gauge their true motives. They did not have genuine intentions with us. So, once they served their purpose, I had them purged from the facility. So, that explains why everyone here isn't in pristine condition. Lizra said, glacing at the corpses of her people around the room. You wouldn't do that to us, right, Tic Tac? As long as you do not jeopardize my sovereignty or attempt to harm my partner. Right. Yeah, no intentions of doing that here. How can we be of assistance, Mr. Tic Tac? To your left, you should see a cryostasis chamber. Inside is my partner. It requires someone to physically release him from the outside. I'll start the process of waking him. Shouldn't be long. 
After a few minutes, the chamber in the corner of the room started to get louder, finally booting back up again after a thousand years of being idle. Okay, may the Enduran please step up and release the clamps on the side? How are you aware of what an Enduran is? This facility was abandoned long before the Illyrian came into contact with the wider galaxy. Zane asked the computer suspiciously. When you attempted to interface with my network, you opened yourself up to my own inquiry. I was able to access your memory and language databases stored within your own systems. I apologize for the violation, but I was just being precautious. Zay did not know how to feel about how easily this program was able to bypass their security measures without them even knowing. That should not have been possible. As an extant, they were a dispersed biological consciousness that was housed in a mechanical form. Their own internal systems should have been entirely shielded from outsider meddling. They put that aside as a note for future reference. Argal walked forward and released the clamps that held shut the pressurized pod. Inside was a creature none of them had ever seen before. It looked more akin to an extent than any biological creature. It reached up and pulled itself out of the pod, denting the metal on either side as it did so. Once it rose to its feet, it was nearly as tall as the Enduran. Argal backed up and looked like he was ready to fight the thing in front of him. Calm down, Enduran. I do not think that would end well for any of us. Tic Tac reprimanded before moving to the speakers in the back of the room and speaking in a strange language. All good, buddy? Can you hear me? Fuck you, Tac. I trusted your plan. The fuck were you thinking? I was conscious for the first five years. Do you have any idea what they put me through? What is it saying? I can't understand it. Lizra asked hopping up on Argal's back, peeking over his shoulder. She was trying to hide behind his bulky form to get a look at the new creature in the room. It had thick black metal plating that blanketed its bipedal form. On its chest were many strange objects and lettering she did not recognize, and beneath the armor was a tight suit that covered everything the metal plating did not. Atop its head was a large metal helmet with a bright orange visor covered in small hexagons that faintly glittered in the light. Momentarily. We are uploading a new language to your translators. This should solve the problem. I see you place this here when I was not paying attention, Tic Tac. I would ask that you refrain from violating our systems in the future. Zate scolded, and a second later the other two were able to understand the strange creature's speech. Tic Tac's voices lit up the intercom in the room once again. Good to hear your voice again, 909. You know I don't like being called Tac anymore. And I said not to call me 909 again, so we're even. Who are these ones? How long has it been? They didn't find us, did they? His voice sounded frantic as he got to the end of his questions. Take it slow. You're very disoriented right now. These ones are friendly. And no, they didn't find us. We're safe. Hi, Mr. 909? Don't call me that. Right, Mr. Human, then. We are here seeking a weapon to help us in a fight against a terrible enemy. Your friend Tic Tac told us that you are what we came for and may be convinced to aid us in this fight. No, I don't do that anymore. I'm done fighting other people's wars. Just get me off this rock. But, sir, you don't understand. The core, they, they're tyrannical. They abuse the countless races of the Outer Belt, take our resources, they're... Unless their goal is to exterminate every beach in the known galaxy to stop me from enjoying my retirement, I'm not interested. Apologies, everyone, but I'm afraid I have some bad news. I've detected a slipspace rupture nearby, and it's headed in our direction. The ship you arrived in, does it have any weapons? Oh, that was fast. Well, it's kind of funny. You see, we were hoping to find one here, so, uh, no, not really.